Hey guys, George of Soundtracks here, and this week we're going to do a decoder installation into this Athern RTR RS3, and we're going to use our TSU 2200, uh, part number 885007 for Alco diesels. We're also going to use two of our mini cubes, part number 810154. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the coupler boxes. Now you can see I've already done that and this is what the coupler box looks like when you remove it. You take the screw out, this bottom plate comes out, and the coupler box. So we're going to take those and set them aside. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to remove two screws that hold the body to the frame. And there's one on each side of this truck normally designated as the front, but this is the rear in this particular case. But you're going to see two screws right there. Now this particular model only had one in there, so be sure to check that and make sure you document. But there are two screws. Once you remove those, as you can see, I've already removed them. Now the body shell simply lifts off and out of the way. Now with this installation, we're going to notice that there is a small PCB board mounted right here on top of the motor. It's held in place with a couple of screws. We have a JST 9-pin plug connector right here that we can simply use to plug in our decoder. Now the question becomes, where are we going to put the speakers? Now this low hood model leaves a lot of room where we could have put speakers but don't have the space, including up here in front. So on this particular installation, we're going to go ahead and put them in the cab. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove the cab. Now on the cab, there are actually two tabs on each side that press into the body shell and hold the cab in place. There's two on this side, two on this side. So what we have to do is we have to very carefully reach our screwdriver here in underneath the cab opening and gently pull out and that will release the tabs on this side. Now when we go to the other side, we put our finger in there to hold the other one to make sure it doesn't go back in place, and we can pop this right off into place. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure to take care not to damage any of the handrails. So you want to gently pull them out of the holes first to make sure that you don't accidentally bend them when you're pulling off your body shell. And there we go. So now we have a place right here that we're going to use to mount our speakers. Now our two mini cube speakers will fit side by side, so we need to drill some holes into this plastic here to make sure that the sound comes out, but also so that our wiring can go in and to the decoder. So we're going to go ahead and do that step. We'll show you what we did. Okay, so now that we've drilled out our holes, you can see that we have a eye pattern going around because we're going to mount our speakers here and here using some double-sided foam tape. I've also removed inside the cab this blister area to allow a little bit more space for the sound to come out, but also to allow a more flat surface to mount the speaker to. I've also drilled two small holes here in the top of the long hood where it introduces to the cab so that I can put my speaker wires through there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to wire up our speakers and we're going to wire these up into a series configuration. So let's get that started next. Okay, so now I have two of our mini cubes and I have a small piece, probably about an inch and a half long of purple wire. And we're going to wire these two speakers in series. So we're going to basically take the wire, one of the purple wires from the decoder. We're going to go to this terminal. Now we're going to wire the second speaker. We're going to go from the second terminal on the first speaker to the first terminal on the second speaker. And then we're going to take the other purple wire from our decoder and wire it to the second terminal on the second speaker. So here's how we do this. We're going to go ahead and hold the speaker down in place with the handle of one of our hand tools here. We're going to take our solder flux this is Alpha Metals OM338 in a syringe. And we're going to put just a little dab here on the corner. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the second speaker since we're going to do that first. 
Now with my small piece of inch and a half long purple wire, we're gonna strip the ends. We're just gonna strip the insulation off about eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, something like that. We're gonna go ahead and gently twist to make sure that all the wire strands are collected together. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna put a little dab of flux on the end. Now we're gonna tin the end of this wire and this is so that it solders onto the terminal for the speaker much easier. So we're gonna get some solder, put this so that it sits up on your table so we can grab it and then we're gonna grab our soldering iron. We're gonna clean the tip on the wet sponge we can get just a little bit of solder here on the end of the iron. Gently touch the end. Now that solder or that wire has been tinned. So next we're just going to get just a little bit more solder. And you can use a pair of tweezers for this process if you like. I know I personally do. Helps give me a little bit more precise control. So we're going to solder to the corner here. So we're just going to take our soldering iron with the solder. We're going to line up our tinned end of the wire. We're simply going to touch to the terminal and the wire is soldered in place. So now we do a close inspection to make sure that the solder is only on this small terminal and not touching the big magnet that's located here. Because if you have any of this solder touching the magnet, you can potentially run into issues. So now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So we can get our wire strippers here. We're going to tin the end of that wire, just again, very small amount. Twist. We're going to grab the flux. We're going to put a little bit on the end. Get our soldering iron cleaned off. A little bit of solder on the end of the iron. And voila, that wire's tinned. Now because we have our second speaker here, we need to make sure it's under the handle of our tool. And then we're gonna to try to do this left-handed. So now, we're simply gonna grab a little bit of our solder, grab our wire, and we're gonna hold it in place. And we put our, solder, our wire to the terminal and there we go. Now it's done. We'll put the iron back down and let's inspect our work. So now you have the small jumper wire between the two speakers to be wired in series. Now we can take either the purple wires coming from the decoder and feed them through the wire, the holes here on the model first, or we can solder two purple wires to it. I'm going to go with the option of this, so we're going to set this aside for the moment. Let's install the decoder and then we can wire up the last two purple wires to the speakers inside the model when it's there. Okay, so I've got my decoder removed from the packaging and as you can see, it has the nine wire harness on the one end and a four wire harness on the other end. Now in this particular model, we do have a nine pin JST connector right here. Now this is the same connector as what's installed on this decoder here. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to plug it in. But first we need to prep our model. Now doing a test fit, we are at the same width as this little tray. So we need to either cut the sides of the tray or we need to remove the tray and our decoder will sit on top of the weight, the corners of the weights here. So I've decided to go ahead and remove that and that way we've got a little bit more room. So these little black plastic clips on the end, internally we call them snoods. But if you take this, you can slide that little clip off. And we're going to take our track power lead and we're going to loosen it. And then now we can simply take this piece of plastic up and out of the way. Now this wire we can either take and put through the hole and reapply the black plastic clip or we can solder it. Now for reliability reasons, I prefer to solder it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So we take again our solder flux and we're gonna tin the end of this wire here. Now again, I've taken this and twisted it just to make sure. We're gonna get our soldering iron. And again, we're gonna get a little bit of solder on the end of the iron here. 
and we're simply going to tin the end. So now that we've tinned the end, we actually have a pretty long piece of exposed wire here. Now one of the things we want to do is we want to trim that a little bit short. So I'm going to grab a set of side cutters and we're going to trim that down to about an eighth of an inch, maybe a half, maybe a uh, sixteenth of an inch in length. So that way you minimize the amount of exposed wire. So now I'm going to take my solder flux. I'm going to put a little bit here on this terminal here on the edge where that wire was. Now we're going to grab my soldering iron. We're going to get a little bit of solder on the end. And now when I make my solder connection, I can put the wire through the hole or I can lay it on top, six of one if does the other, it really doesn't matter either way. But now when I make my solder connection, there's nothing new that's really exposed here and our wire is put back in place here. And as you can see, it's reliably making a connection. So we can simply take that and set it down here and our decoder will fit on top. So now we need to prep the decoder. So as I mentioned, we have the nine wire harness here on the end, but as you can see, the shrink tubing is over the part of the wire or part of the uh, harness that we need to remove it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take an X-Acto knife. We're just gonna trim just a little bit back. Let's get a little bit more here. We're gonna trim that insulation. We're gonna go on the side now remember, we don't want to expose any of the parts of the decoder. So on here, we're going to go up from the side of the connector to the front of the PCB. And then we're on this side of the PCB, we can just simply go straight along the edge of the decoder and trim that insulation. And then on this side, we can do the same thing where we go to the front, back to where we made the cut. And then we can simply peel this back. So we have our connector exposed. The location of this or if this is pulled away really doesn't matter. But now you can see how clean that connection is. We just simply unplug the harness. And now we have a nine wire connector that will plug right into this nine wire DCC quick plug. Now we need to do the same thing here. We need to unplug the dummy plug. So we're simply going to pull this out and set it aside. Now with the decoder, we simply plug it into the nine pin JST connector. Make sure it's evenly pressed in place and it's fully seated, or you could run into connection problems later on. So now our decoder is installed, and now our decoder will simply drop in place right where that tray was. Now we have four wires coming off the back. Two of these are for the speaker. Two of these are for the FX5 and the FX6 lighting effect. Well, we wanna do two things here at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to fish out the FX5 and the FX6 wires. Now, because we're not gonna use them in this particular installation, we can trim them back or we can remove them completely. But for the moment, we're going to go ahead and just trim them back because that way we don't have two loose wires running around. And what we'll do is we'll tape them to the decoder, which we're also going to tape to the weights right here on the front of the model so that that way the decoder stays in place, but we also have uh, these wires secured so that they're not floating around loose. So we're going to go ahead and measure the wires coming back and we're going to simply cut and then we'll get some tape and mount that in place. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have our decoder taped in place, now we wanna feed our two speaker wires up to where we're gonna mount our speakers so we can put the body shell back in place. So we're gonna take a pair of tweezers here and we're gonna take our wires. And we're just gonna feed them through the holes that we've drilled earlier in this step. And there we go. So now with these two wires fed in place, we're gonna go ahead and pull this through as much as we can so we have enough wire to pull. And we're gonna drop the 
body shell in place and make sure everything fits. And look at that. It does. So now with our decoder in place, we can test it as it stands right now, making sure the two speaker wires don't touch each other, or we can continue on and press forward. I would encourage testing it, so we're gonna go do that right now. Okay, so I'm here real quick at the test track. We've got our locomotive on the track, we've got our track powered up. Obviously we don't have sound because we haven't hooked up the speakers yet. So we just need to make sure the locomotive moves in the forward direction, which it does. It's gonna check the reverse direction, make sure the locomotive moves in the reverse direction. Let's check our lights. Backup light is on and the forward light is on. So, so far so good. So let's go put the speakers in next. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and mount the speakers. So first we're gonna get some double-sided foam tape. We're gonna get a nice clean cut on the one end. Now we don't need a whole lot, so we're just gonna get a small little piece so again, we're just holding the speaker in place. So now we're gonna take our double-sided tape, we're gonna mount it to the back of the speaker. Now that we're ready to go, we can remove the rubber band from around the cube speaker. And the rubber band just simply holds it in place to make sure that this speaker doesn't pop out. So we're gonna take our double-sided tape and just secure it to the back. Now we do that and repeat for the other side. So now that we got both of these, we're going to simply put these into the body shell just like this. So we're gonna mount one, then the other. So while we're doing this, we need to be careful. We need to take these extra wires and kind of pull them to the side when we're mounting this. Now this is where if you have self-closing tweezers, it becomes really handy because you can move these out of the way pretty easily. So we're going to remove the edge the sticky part of our tape here and we're going to mount where the small wire is between the two speakers so this one is going to mount on this side of the body shell and we want to take care to align it exactly where we want it just like that now we're going to do the same thing for the other side so again we move our wires out of the way here we're gonna peel the backing. And now we're simply going to mount this speaker next to the other, taking care and paying attention to where those holes are to make sure that we're not covering them up. And there we go. And now we have our speakers mounted in the cab. Now the last thing we need to do is trim and insulate the wires and tack them onto this uh, two corners. So we've got one speaker wire for each side. The loose wire we can tuck down in between. And we're gonna go ahead and do that, clean it up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've got our wires up and ready to solder to the speakers, we're gonna go ahead and grab our wires and we're gonna strip and tin the ends of these again, same way we did before. Use our wire strippers. There we go. All right. Now we're going to gently twist the ends just to make sure that all the wires are tucked in. Now we're going to apply some flux. Now we're gonna grab our soldering iron. We're gonna grab a little bit of solder off the end here. And again, we're just gonna to touch the ends of these wires and the solder will flow from the soldering iron into the wire and that will tin the ends. Now these ended up being a little long for my personal preference. So we're gonna go ahead and trim those wires just a little bit shorter so that that way we don't have a whole lot of exposed wire on the end. Because remember, the least amount of wire you can have exposed, the better off we are. All right, so now we're gonna put a little flux on these corner on these solder pads right here on the corner. Whoops, a little too much. Although it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference. 
We also don't want to be wasteful either. All right. So now we grab our soldering iron, get a little bit of solder on the end of the iron, and then I'm going to hold the wire with these tweezers, just like we did before. Eh, that wire's still a little long. Let me cut a little bit shorter. There we go. So, now I'm just going to take this, we're going to touch it to the solder pad, and there we go. Solder's done. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So we're going to get a little bit of solder on the end of the iron. And just like this. There we go. Now, let's go test this and make sure that it works using the speakers, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll button this thing up when we're done. Okay, we're here at the test track. We've got everything soldered up and ready to go. Let's apply track power. And, and that's a good sign, means we've got track power applied, we've got audio working, speakers are good. All right, let's move it forward. Can we see our headlight on? We'll move it in reverse. And we have our reverse light on. So this looks like it's a successful installation. So let's go ahead and go back to the workbench. We'll button it up, get all these wires tucked in, get the shell back applied, and then we'll come back and set a few CVs. Okay, so now that we're back here at the workbench, we're gonna go ahead and remove the body shell. Simply lift off. And that can be glued in place if you want or taped down, however the case is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these purple wires into the body shell here so that it minimizes the amount of wire that's sticking out here on the top. So we can just simply tug in a little bit here and you can kind of see how that wire is now being tucked in. Make sure that it's not invading, or not invading with the fitting of the body shell, but also we'll make sure to get um, good contact and clean contact. And then the other thing we did was this loose wire between the two terminals on the speakers, we actually tucked down in between the speakers and the uh, body shell there as well. So all of this here is designed to minimize the amount of space there. We've got our wires here. Now we can simply put our body shell on and we'll mount our couplers. Okay, now that we've got our wires tucked away, we can put our body shell in place. We'll just make sure everything fits down nice and good. Now we can also reapply our cab. Now this should fit right over there. The biggest thing you wanna pay attention to is to make sure that your grab iron, or make sure that your handrails are not going to be caught under the cab as we're placing it as we're installing it because those handrails are really thin you don't want to break any of them you want to make sure that they're going to fit right back into the holes where they belong so now this will just slide in place okay now once you've got your cab snapped in place we can gently place our handrails back into the holes where they originally came out. Now all that's left to do is to install the screws on the underside of the body. So again, we're going to go under here. Now we're going to grab our two very small countersunk screws that will mount right into the body here. And now I'm gonna grab my Phillips head screwdriver and we're gonna tighten this down in place. Okay, after we've got our body shell on, we've got our cab in place, now we place our couplers back in place and we place our screws mounted here. Again, this model only had one screw there, so we've got everything tied up. Let's go take it for a test run and then we'll set up some CVs. Okay, now that we've got our decoder installed, everything's ready to go. Now we're going to adjust a few CVs so that we can select the sound so that the decoder matches the model that it's installed into. So we're going to go ahead and apply track power. 
And we're gonna fire this decoder up. Now, first thing at first, we're gonna go ahead and set the address. Now, this is gonna be a unique process because this locomotive is actually set to 82, which would actually be a short address. Traditionally, we go from address three to a long address of 1,589, whatever. But in this case, we are gonna use a second short address. So to do this, we can do one of two things. We can either go in and use the programming track and change CV1 directly, or we can do this a roundabout way where we program an arbitrary long address, say address 1000, and then we go back and set it to an ad short address of 82 while it's on the main line. So we're gonna show you that process. So first we're gonna go ahead and program. We're gonna program on the main line. We're gonna program loco three. Now in this case, we're gonna press one for address. Then it's gonna ask us one for long, two for short. We're gonna push the one. Now again, we can set this to 8200 or 1000. I'm gonna use 1000 just because it's easy to remember. So now when I set the address, now my throttle says locomotive 1000. And as you can see, we have control of our decoder. So now I'm gonna do the same process, but we're gonna select a short address. So now we're gonna program on the main line, program loco 1000, because that's currently what the decoder is set to. Now we're gonna press one for address. Now in this case, two for short. Now we're gonna set a short address of 82. We're gonna press enter, and now our throttle says loco 82, and you can see that we have control of our decoder. So now that the address is set, we're gonna select a few things. Now first off, we look at this model, and there's a nice three chime air horn on the locomotive. So we're gonna go ahead and select CV120, and I'm gonna pick the K3L air horn, which is whistle or air horn number two. Now, when I blow the horn, you can hear a different air horn. So I like that one. Now again, we're gonna go ahead and let our user decide the final, but this is just showing you the process. Now next up, we do have the sound of a 539 turbocharge, but this is an Alco 244 since this is an RS3. So now we're gonna go ahead and change CB 123, and we're gonna use our sound selection reference, and we're gonna see that the Alco 244 is prime mover choice number two. So now I can go on the main line, I'm gonna set CB123 to a value of two, and you're gonna instantly hear that decoder change, and now you're gonna hear the Alco 244 play. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we can select the type of bell that's being played. So here we have three different Alco bells to choose from. This is the default. So we can go ahead and change CB122. And in this case, we're gonna try the first one, bell zero through three. And remember, zero is the slowest fat ring rate, three is the fastest ring rate. And so a value between those will determine the different ring rates. So now when I select a value of two, you hear that bell change, and now you hear a medium fast ring rate. So I'm gonna leave that one there because I like that one. Now the other thing that we're gonna do is we can select the air compressor in CV124, and then we can select the poppet valve or the air dryer in CV125. Now in this case, CV124 for the air compressor, this is a uh, engine driven air compressor, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one alone. But the air dryer is a modern appliance, and so I'm gonna change CV125 to a value of zero, and that's gonna select the poppet valve. So now when that moisture condenses, you're gonna hear that poppet valve expel that moisture out of the poppet valve. Now the last thing we wanna do on this particular locomotive is these RS3s on this particular railroad ran long hood forward. And you can see by designating the F for front right there on the side sill. Now when I run this locomotive in the forward direction, you can see that it runs just like a traditional diesel short hood forward. So to do this, we're gonna look in CV29 and we're gonna see that bit zero can reverse the normal direction of travel. 
so that that way we can run long hood forward. So in this case, because we're using a short address and we've changed nothing else, the default value for CB29 is a value of two. So in order to reverse the normal direction of travel, we're gonna set CB29 to a value of three. Now, when I run in the forward direction, you're gonna notice that my locomotive runs long hood forward. And you're gonna also notice that the lights follow along with that. Now this is just a brief overview of some of the things you can do when you're setting up your decoder to match your model install. For more information, please visit our website at soundtracks.com, download the user's guide and read through it for all the tips and hints and all the things that you can do with the Tsunami 2. Guys, I hope this has been helpful for you and feel free to answer and reach out to us if you do have any questions and we'll be happy to help.